answers that are not taught. We can go through the list of things. They're not real. Genuine is everything. Where you hand your spirit, when you go to church, you're handing your spirit to that pastor and say, I want my spirit, I want my spiritual life to grow where yours is. I mean, there's no greater submission. Scary, isn't it? But this is why your friends, you're doing the same things with them. Who are your friends? You know, David had a friend. Well, you know, and this is what we find sometimes when you're, when you're first born again, man, you've got all your friends from the past. Man, they're cool with you. Hey, I go to church on Sunday. Yeah, all right. Whatever. Hey, man, we got a party on Saturday night. You coming? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get away. What do you mean you're trying to get away from that lifestyle? What's wrong with you, man? What do you think, you're better than we are? What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong? A beer isn't good enough for you? What's wrong now, dude? You can't smoke pot any longer? What's wrong with you? Are you thinking that you're greater and more holier than we are? Anybody ever heard that before? David had the same scenario where, and he had faithful friends, but one day, one day, when he lost his throne to his son, Absalom, something happened to one of his good friends. And this is found in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16, 16 through 18. And so it was when Hushai, can you imagine your mother naming you that? In our chite, David's friend came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, live long, the king, live long, the king. So Absalom said to Hushai, is, is, is this your loyalty to your friend? Even, his, even, even David's enemy, his son at that point in time, who was taking over his kingdom, looked at David's friend, who was supposed to be loyal to him, but because he was no longer in the throne, changed his loyalties, said, what is wrong with you? Aren't you, aren't you my father's friend? There's nothing wrong with having friends that aren't born again. You need friends that aren't born again, or you can never share Jesus with them. But the question is, who's the greater influence in your relationship? Are you living like they are, or are they going to start living like you are? Oh, Jesus, come on now. I knew it got quiet, and you could even hear the children's in the other side. Well, you know, Pastor, these have been my friends my whole life. But when you're out with your friends, can somebody that's not part of your friends tell that you're different? Or are you just the same as all your friends? You can pick your feet up. It won't hurt as bad. You see, this is where Christianity hits the rubber on the road. This is where we are either Christians or we're religious folk. Religious folk go to hell just as quick as those who are living all the way for the devil. So I got a concept for you. If you're going to hell, baby, do it well. Don't play Jesus stuff if you're going to hell. Go all the stinking way. Live for the devil with all you got. Drink everything you can drink. Screw anything that moves. Smoke all the pot. Don't tell the cops in the church. I say, if you're going to go to hell, do it well. But if you're going to live with God, what are you playing half cock crap for? The world's not interested in your religion. The, 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 the world wants to see that God is real. And you and I are his only plan. You see, and this is what happened in the first century church. These people got saved. Now, I want to remind you what happened when these people got saved. Their old lifestyle changed, and they started getting into the apostles' doctrine continually. They started fellowshipping with the other brothers and sisters. That means when they were struggling that day with the sin that they had worked with before, they had someone to encourage them and say, hey, dude, I'll go out to drink with you. They 
had someone to say, listen, man, I'm here for you. Let's pray together. You're discouraged? Let me pray with you. Ah, ah, you're physically ill? Let me pray with you. They surrounded themselves with the believers. Listen, I'm not talking exclusively because when the, the church of Thessalonica decided that Jesus was coming, they sold everything they had. They moved to caves, and God rebuked them through the apostle Paul and said, what are you doing up there? Occupy till I come. Get down there. Save the lost. It's time to recognize that as a church, we've got to have unsaved friends. But the line is when they influence you more than you influence them, it's time to break off friendship, make them an acquaintance, and build friendships that are godly so when you are struggling, you can get strong. Am I preaching all right this morning? James chapter 4, verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is an enemy with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You ever heard of George Barna? You ever heard of George Barna? He's the church statistician. There's actually guys out there that that actually get all the stats for the churches, like how many people are saved, how many people are going to church. Right now it used to be 80, 80% of the church was 80 people or less. Now the new statistician uh, came out with now it's 80% of the church is 75 people or less. Um, what is the size church for the different levels? So on and so forth. Well, this is his, he did a whole portion, man. It was really intense as I was reading it. He did a... Comparison between people who don't know God and people who do know God. And the comparison was this. The church was only 2% different than the world. And sometimes in the wrong direction. Watch the same movies. Give the same amount of money. Come on now. Drink the same amount of booze. Come on. I can go down through all the different sins that he looked at. And the world was even with the church. And it means that no wonder the church world is shrinking because I'm still early. No wonder the church world is shrinking because the world who needs God looks at the church and says, why would I want what they got? I'm no different than they are. No one said perfect. But really what this all is based on is who our friends are. Because who you hang with is who you become like. Oh, you don't know that that's the Bible? Here's what the Bible, here's what the Bible says. Where is that? There we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. Anybody here ever work in the trades? I did. My father was a contractor up in Boston, and we did a, aw, where's that baby? Where's Eli? Aw, where's your baby? Can I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step around you. No, I'm going to step around you. This is Eli. When Eli turns five, are you going to let him just hang out with anybody? What if he had a friend that was nine? The average sexual uh, activity now is right around nine years old for kids, by the way. So would you let him hang out with a nine-year-old who's sexually active at six years old? Do you realize us parents, we protect our children of who we allow them to hang with because we want our children to be influenced properly? But when it comes to us, we don't even care enough about ourselves to protect ourselves. Jesus. I didn't figure this was going to be an easy sermon, but, you know. I'm almost done.
I believe that friendship is something that is so honorable, so necessary, but you got to protect yourself in it so greatly. Can I give you some homework? <laughs> no. Here's your homework. I want you to list your top five best friends, and I want you to write down, are they positive for you, or are you positive for them? That should be a challenge. The Bible declares, let's look at the verse here real quickly. I'm almost done. Really, I am almost completed. Okay, I had this verse. There it is. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion, koinonia, friendship, has light with darkness? My passion is to see God's house grow. My passion is to see people saved that don't know God. My passion is to see people that have never thought about God, never cared about God, all of a sudden have an apocalypsis, an unveiling in their spirit. They have a revelation that God is not just there, but God is good and God is for them. And God will wash away every single stain. I love God taking a life and transforming them to where when you look at them five years later, you would never even fathom where they came from. But it's not going to happen on accident. The truth is, is that you are the plan of God. And if you're not the influencer in your relationships, you're the influenced in your relationships. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. We always look at that in relationships. And you know, I found too that most Christians really could care less what God has to say. I'm having a good time this morning now. I watch young ladies and young men choose relationships with an unbeliever and wonder why they're no longer serving God after a short period of time. Uh. But then I watch the same thing, where they choose friends that aren't believers who they don't influence, and then within a short period of time, they walk away from God. Your success and my success in our walk with Jesus is not an accident. Your success in your relationship with your spouse is not an accident. If you spend no time with your spouse, if you do not learn who your spouse is, you will be alone. And it's no different in the house of God. You need friends. You need people around you that when hell opens up and tries to lick your stinking toenails, that you have fire extinguishers all the way around you. you got believers who aren't just weak, but people of faith. People that will say, in the name of Jesus, we're not standing next to you. We're holding your hands up. We're believing with you. Listen, you're not all by yourself. I'm right here with you. We need believers to be friends and strengthen us that when you are down, you have someone to lift you up. That when you are struggling... You're not by yourself. That when you are good and they are bad, you've got a way to restore them. Who are your friends? Do you even have any friends in the body of Christ? I hear this all the time, and I really just want to vomit on it. I like word pictures. Well, that wasn't vomit. Here's word pictures. If you're not a friendly person, you can't expect to have friends. And if you don't fellowship with anybody in the church, 
how do you expect to build friends? Do you realize we have almost every kind of ministry you can ever imagine? In fact, we're going to give every one of you one of these at the end of service, and you can plug it right onto your refrigerator. We have so many outreaches. We have choir, dance, drama, driven, which is our young college and career all the way up to 30. His kids, line crosses, the motorcycle ministry. His moms. Hello? Yes, Jesus. His singles, his sportsmen's, hospitality, infertility support group, men's ministry, outreach, raw, which is our junior youth ministry, 9 to 11s, rage, which is our 12 to 18s, recovery ministry, those who have been struggling with addictions, seasoned seniors, man, they do a lot of fun stuff, sports groups, taken photography, women's book club, women's ministry, young couples, oh my goodness, and I know there's more. There's something for everybody in this house. And worship team. I know I'm going to, sign language ministry. There's just so much. Do you want to know how to build friends? You, that means you've got to get where people are. People who come to rock solid faith build friendships. Why? Because they get to talk a lot after. I usually have, I, I'm, I kick people out. Because I won't go home. But this way we build relationships and friendships. Can I challenge you? You first got to evaluate who are your friends. Are they good or are they bad? I don't care if they've been long term. Are they worth going to the lake of fire over? You've got to also say to yourself, how am I going to build new relationships that are going to help me and build me? Oh, I know this is not a shout and let's all dance it down sermon. But it is a message that will change your life. How many of you know that God is not into games? Who wrote the Bible? God, through the, inspir- uh, the, the men, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, penned the word of God. It's God's word. Not Spencer's word. Not his tabernacle family church's word. Not a religion's word. Not a denomination's word. This is God's word. And if God's word says that you and I need to be steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, then we need to obey God's word. Amen? I said amen. Amen. We have two things for you at the end of service. We would like one per family. We have all the teaching classes that are offered at His Tabernacle Family Church. Plug it right onto your refrigerator. We have all the connection groups. Plug it right onto your refrigerator. You want to know more times? You've got a bulletin. You want to know more times? HisTabernacle.com. You want to know more times? 607-739-5196. There's somebody waiting to answer your question, to get you plugged into a ministry, to get you plugged into friendship, to get you plugged into a connection group so that you don't have to feel like you're all by yourself. Bow your heads with me this morning. I know this is a different type of message. But I know that this will change you. This will change your life. As the worship team is coming, I'm going to share this last story. If you all just bow your heads. I I used to go and get my hair cut for free. There was a man who would cut my hair whenever I wanted it done for free. He was a Christian. Nice guy. But when I sat in his chair... He would start to tell me all the gossip of the area. Did you hear what this pastor's doing? Did you hear what that guy's doing? Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't believe what this person's doing over here. A year went by, still getting my hair cut for free. But every time I left his barber shop, I felt dirty. I'm talking a Christian. And I came to a decision after a little bit. I said, you know something? Feeling like vomit has been spewed all over me after getting a free haircut is not worth a free haircut. And I said, I'm breaking off that relationship. I was honest with the guy. He says, you know, I'm going to get my hair cut in a different place. He was mad. But you know what? Sometimes you got to let him be mad. Because you've got to procure your relationship with Jesus. Because they're not hanging out with you when you get to heaven. 
before the judgment of God. You're all by your own. Who are your friends? Jesus, I pray that this morning that you would be able to look at us just as you looked at Abraham. 